This is my banjo, I love it, I do. Howdy, welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. This is your favorite online learning place to learn how to play the guitar, the banjo, or the mandolin. We're doing a series on Beaumont Rag in the key of C. I'm teaching it on all three instruments over there on the website. And this week is Banjo Week. Um, I love learning banjo tunes out of the key of C. It kind of switches things up a little bit. We're so used to, as banjo players, playing out of the key of G. So why don't you give your brain a little twist here? If you have a brain, I'm assuming that you do, although you are a banjo player. Here in a little while, I'll ask you to go visit the website and where you can watch the 20 plus minute video for this song, as well as I have four different uh, speeds of guitar rhythm track videos you can practice along with. Download the PDF or the TIFF file tab for this, which is 100% accurate to the way I played it in the performance. I also have an MP3 over there where you can go and download that uh, so that you can practice along with it. I have everything you need. So all that's left to do now is for me and you to dive into measure one of Beaumont Rag in the key of C on the banjo. Today we're gonna to learn how to play Beaumont Rag out of the key of C, but we're not going to put a capo on and we're not gonna do any kind of weird tuning. This is just standard tuning. But we're gonna be based out of the C position. This makes it a lot of fun to play because it stretches you just a little bit. You're used to playing out of the G position most of the time. Now notice that all of my notes, beneath the notes, I have the right hand fingerings there. So T stands for thumb, two stands for middle, one would stand for index on whatever particular string uh, that they're on. We're gonna start out in kind of a, a melodic style position on the fifth fret. And we're gonna start with our index finger on the fifth fret of the G string. And we're just gonna walk up the scale because our target note is this F note, which is on the sixth fret of the B string. That's where we want to end up. So we could get these same notes by playing them down here. But if I want to end up in this position, I'm just going to grab those first three notes up here just so I don't have to move as much. So we're going to start out there with three quarter notes. And notice that I'm playing most of these notes with my thumb. I like to play my thumb whenever I possibly can. I'm more powerful with it and I'm more accurate with it. Okay. Then we're going to land on the 6th fret, as I said, at the beginning of measure 2. Then we're just going to play a forward roll through it. And then release. So measures 1 and 2 together. Okay. Then we're just going to, we're going to play a lot of Scruggs type licks in this tune. I, I, I thought about doing it in melodic style, but then I just ended up writing it mainly Scruggs style. Uh, so a lot of these are standard Scruggs licks, just like in measure 3. We're just going to have a slide with a forward roll. Once again. Then we go back to the C chord, because Beaumont Rag starts out in a G chord, even though it's in the key of C. And we're going to grab the, this is a little melodic position. Second fret with our index, fourth fret on the second string with our ring finger, and we're going to do a backwards roll. And notice I play that fourth fret with my thumb, and then we're going to release and play the open G, uh, D string. Measure four slow down, the whole thing sounds like this. And I go into this partial C chord whenever I land there. And I'm going to keep that there because in measure five, we're going to do a really quick pull off from the second fret to open on the G string with our middle finger. And that's a really fast pull off. We want to get that pull off accomplished before we play that first fret. And after we pull it off, we're going to go down and land on the second fret of the fourth string so that we're in our full C position. Okay. When we get to measure six, we're going back to a G chord, and we're going to um, start off on the low D string. We're going to hammer from open to the third fret with my ring finger. And leave that down for the rest of that measure. That's measure six slowed down. And then measure seven, we're going to do something that's not typical in most of your banjo songs but it uh, really characterizes this song, and that's, we're gonna do an inside roll. What I mean by that is we're gonna use our middle finger 
to instead of just mainly playing the first finger, we're going to reach inside and use it to play that B string some. Okay, and that may take you a little while to get used to if you've never done it before. Okay, and we're going to start that there, measure seven. So let me play measure six and seven for you, slow down, you'll see how that works. Here's the inside roll. It'll feel natural after you get used to it. And then we're going to go and measure eight to a partial C position, meaning we're going to play that second fret down there and then the first fret up here on the B string. And we're going to do another inside roll pattern. I'm going to start on the middle three strings and then just move everything up one string and play it the same thing. So we've got two forward rolls in a row, but the first roll is on the middle three strings and the second forward roll is on the first three strings. You may just want to kind of sit there and practice that. And then <clears throat> we're going to do that forward roll again at the end of measure eight, but then end up playing the full C chord going into measure nine. So eight and nine sound like this.